This video is going to look at how we do confidence intervals for proportions. So our example says, suppose that a market research firm is hired to estimate the percent of adults living in a large city who have cell phones. 500 randomly selected adult residents in the city are surveyed to determine whether they have cell phones. Of the 500 people sampled, 421 responded, yes, they own cell phones. We want to compute a confidence interval estimate for the true proportion of adult residents of this city who have cell phones for a 90% confidence interval as well as a 99% confidence interval. So key things to point out, notice it says that we're to compute a confidence interval for the proportion. So that's the key word to look for. It tells us that we want to do a confidence interval, and then specifically it says to do a proportion confidence interval. We'll see how to do confidence intervals for mean in the next section. So reading through the problem, we are told that 500 people are sampled, so our sample size is 500, and then X, which represents the number of successes, is 421. So 421 people own cell phones. Then we probably should go ahead and calculate our P hat and our Q hat. P hat represents the proportion of successes. So in this case, it's going to be 421 divided by 500. And then Q hat is the complement of P hat. So Q hat is equal to one minus our P hat value. So we can see that 84.2% of people have a cell phone and 15.8% of people do not have a cell phone. All right, and then we're gonna do this for two different confidence intervals. We'll do the 90% first. Okay, so if you visualize your standard normal distribution, it looks like a bell curve, and because we're doing a 90% confidence interval, that means the middle of the graph is going to have 0.9 of the area. So on either side, the two tails together is going to be the complement of what's in the middle, or 1 minus 0.9, or 0.10 is the total area that's not in the middle 90%. And then I like to think of these two tails and because it's a symmetric normal distribution, the same area is going to be on top and bottom. So the area in each tail is half of what was left over. So half of 0.1 is going to be 0.05 on either side. So we've got 0.05 in the very top of the graph, 0.05 in the very bottom, and then the 90% that we're interested in is in the middle. So to find our Z alpha, over two, which is our critical value, we need to use the norm inverse function to find the point that has, that's associated with this area where we've got 5% in the very bottom, 90% in the middle, and then 5% at the very top. And there's a couple different ways you can put this in. Honestly, what I like to do is I like to put in the area of the bottom tail, which is going to be that 0.05, then comma zero, comma one to tell it that it's a standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And so that gives me a critical value of negative 1.6449, rounded to four decimal places. And then I'll use this in my next formula to get the margin of error. Um, in the notes, I believe it puts in the top number. So it would be the area to the left of the top side, which would be 0.95. If we did that, it would actually give us the same value except the positive version. So if we did the area below the top tail, it would be 0.95 comma zero comma one. And again, it's the 1.6449, same number, but positive. Okay, so next we get our margin of error. And our margin of error formula is the Z alpha over two. I know it's Z alpha over two, it's always the positive one. And so yes, I intentionally compute the negative one because it's easier to stick that each tail area for me into my norm inverse function but I know I've got to put the positive value in it. So I'll put in 1.6449, or if you had calculated the positive one directly, you'd already have it. Again, it doesn't matter which one you calculate, you just need the positive one to go in our formula. And then it's times the square root of our p hat, which is 0.842, times our q hat, which was 0.158, divided by n, which was 500. So our margin of error is our z alpha over two times the square root of p hat times q hat over n, and then to get our lower and upper boundaries of our confidence interval, we take our p hat minus the margin of error. p hat is our point estimates. So we do p hat minus our margin of error, and then p hat plus our margin of error. And if we were to write this in a complete sentence, text box we can type, 
we could say something to the effect that we are 90% confident that the proportion of adults with a cell phone is between 0.8152 and 0.868. And so that would be our confidence interval. Now we're going to do this one for the 99% interval as well, just so you can see how it's similar and how it's different. So if we're doing the 99% confidence interval, that means in the middle we have 0.99 of the area. So what's left over to go in those two tails combined is going to be 1 minus what's in the middle, or 0.01. And then since it's symmetric, the area on each side is going to be the same. So if we take that leftover area and divide it by 2, we have 0 0.005 on either side. So our z alpha over 2 is going to be norm inverse. And again, I just do the each tail comma 0 comma 1 going to give me the negative value, which is fine. I'll just make it positive in the next step. So negative 2.5758. So this time our margin of error is going to be our positive z alpha over 2 times the square root of sqrt of um, p hat times q hat divided by n. So it's a little bit bigger. And then to get our lower and upper bounds of our confidence, confidence interval, we do p hat minus our margin of error. And then p hat plus our margin of error. So we would say for this one, if we're interpreting it, we would say that we are 99% confident that the proportion of adults with a cell phone is between 0.79998 and 0 0.8840. So basically between 80% and 88%. Whereas when we only did the 90%, it was between about 82 and 87. But one thing that you'll notice is when we make our confidence interval wider, so when we went from a 90 to a 99, our interval ends up wider as well. If we're going to be more confident, we're going to end up with a wider interval so that there's a greater chance this is one of the interval that contains the true proportion we're looking for.